There is no question that there is, by definition, a conspiracy to mutate and attack the biology of humanity. And specifically, we're talking now about the assault on our hormone levels. The key thing here is that masculinity is now almost dead in this, in this nation of the United States. Masculinity has been assaulted and feminized from estrogen mimickers like BPA, so on and so forth. And if there's one man that knows really what's going on, who's been researching this and telling me stuff off the air that blew my mind, it's Dr. Edward Group, who's been studying this for two decades, specifically with the attack on masculinity, but also the attack on women as well with the hormones completely out of whack, insane emotional responses that make no sense because your body is under such assault on a daily basis that we don't know what we're even thinking about oftentimes. And that's why we can't understand politically what's going on as well. So Dr. Group, thanks for joining us and you know, tell us about specifically the root of this attack, how it ties into eugenics and what's going on. Well, a long time ago, uh, even you know, before the 1940s when you know, the German scientists and the Russian scientists wanted to, and the big companies like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds wanted to put together a eugenics program because they saw that the world would be overpopulated in the future. They wanted to create ways to control the population. And the way that you do that, one of two ways, is you either increase the death rate or you decrease the birth rate. So they put play, things into action to decrease the death rate. Obviously, we know that with different types of chemicals and they're killing us off with pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. But the big thing is the fact that they're manipulating the hormone levels in the body and the fact that they're decreasing, or the plan anyway, is to decrease the birth rates. Now, how they're doing that is through many different ways. You know, the oil and gas industry, which created uh, different types of polyesters and, and, and oil and gas type derivatives, which led into plastic development, et cetera. Those are all endocrine disruptors. And the creation of the majority of chemicals out there, including the heavy metal toxicity, the way that they designed to attack the body was they knew that the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the thyroid gland, the adrenal glands, all the glands in the hypothalamus, the thalamus, those are what regulate your sex hormones, those are what regulate all the hormones. They knew that every cell in the body needed, needed hormones for regulation. So they knew also about testosterone. And that's why I call this pretty much eugenics program, the Operation Testosterone, because the more that I get into this, the more things that I see. I mean, you could open up your cabinet in your kitchen and pull out eugenic stuff that, that mimics testosterone, suppresses testosterone, or increases the estrogen. Those are really the ways that they're trying to do this. And it all started, you know, with trying to also, that's one method is that they're trying to reduce these hormones. The second method is they're also using genetic manipulation. They want to manipulate the genes. The third method is division. They want to separate the males and the females. They want to break up the families because they don't want strong families. They don't want you to be creating healthy babies over and over and over again. So those are the three methods. The first one through chemical warfare uh, dates back to Agent Orange and dates back to the chemicals such as pesticides. I mean, pesticides are some of the most extensive and damaging hormone disruptors that completely reduce the testosterone levels. How does this all come into effect though? I mean, it really comes into effect and when you ingest all these things, in the womb when the baby's growing, because all children start as a female, which is very interesting when, when the eggs divide, and then only with the introduction of testosterone does the, do the ovaries form into testes and the clitoris forms into the penis. And just the slightest amount of hormonal changes, though, can wreck the body. And, but we're talking about an assault, an assault from BPA, the estrogen mimicking chemicals that are like tied in almost every single study, 90% of the studies, every woman with breast cancer has this inside of them. So it's a complete attack. It's a barrage on the gates of our biology. And that, we're talking about something that's so, so finite and so, so, so minute that even the slightest change could ruin our health. Even the slightest change. I mean, you know, we're, who knows what we're gonna see generations from now and generations from now and generations from now, but what we're seeing right now is we're seeing literally the feminization of the country, the demasculinization. I mean, we're having 
a lot of miscarriages actually because the fe the, the female fetus is a lot stronger than the male fetus. And when it, like just after 9-11, when there was so much stress, we had an increase in miscarriages of males because stress has a lot to do with that. Obviously, the adrenal gland is a stress hormone and it's still your hormones are off and, and it affects the endocrine. When I say endocrine disruptors, you know, we're talking about things that increase estrogen and decrease testosterone, but endocrine disruptors also disrupt other hormones inside the body too. So what we're dealing with is the mothers that are eating soy products, for example, using personal care products, using antibacterial soaps that have triclosan in it. I mean, all these petrochemicals, all these chemicals that are gonna disrupt their natural hormones from shampoos to makeup. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. They're constantly exposed to this. This, as well as birth control pills, which was another method of reducing the population by increasing estrogen concentrations, all these things tied together are going to alter the fetus. Now, when the fetus inside, if there's not enough testosterone, then the fetus is going to turn into a female. If it turns into a female, that's great. There's in, like in Peru, because of all the petrochemical companies down there dumping things in the water, they're having eight women to every one male right now. So they figure the least males on the planet, then, you know, usually males are the aggressive ones. You know, it's easy to control women and it's easy, you know, women are pretty passive, but if they have a lot of aggressive males, you know, those are the ones that can challenge them. And that's the, the main focus is to dumb the males down. And the problem with fertility is usually with males because 50% of males have low sperm counts and 80% have dis, you know, sperm that doesn't swim the right way or it's not in the proper form or it's, you know, not, you know, correct as far as being able to, to plant that seed because the sperm is gonna determine whether it's a male or female, but then also once the fetus is in there, it's going to, to change into a male or a female. Well, you notice there are a lot of studies on this and scientists, and they're always trying to look for some outside immediate source without thinking about the chemicals, the plastics, the BPA, nothing. They're always just thinking, well, you know, it might be genealogically that we've come to this point through evolution that we no longer are having fertility rates skyrocket and all this stuff. When they're saying now infertility is such uh, at, at a drastic amount that within the next thousand years we could face extinction and this is ramping up over and over again. Why do you think, is it just because they're paid off? They're not even referencing things like BPA. Well, it's, you know, the media doesn't want you, the media is behind it too, because the media, it tries to separate males. They only report on the divorces. They only report on all the bad things that males are doing. They're the reporting on the kind of and things that manipulate that. society through media and, you know, the men which are becoming so feminine and they're, you know, they, they were born with smaller penises or whatever and now they're, they're, uh, they're lazy, they don't want to work as much. I mean, it's harder to find a job, it's harder to find men. Like if you go back 50 or 60 years when men really had higher testosterone levels and they were willing to work and they were, you know, they did, you know, their pheromones that they were releasing were attracting women. And now the pheromones that men are releasing are actually attracting men and not really attracting because the alpha male is becoming more of like a more of a submissive type of a male because they have higher estrogen levels. They're getting man boobs. You know, they're having a hard time with uh, erectile dysfunction. They're having a hard time with impotence. I mean, all these things are affecting the male, which psychologically affects the male's alpha male ability to have confidence and approach women and everything else. And so it's easier for a male now to sit at home, play video games, be lazy, watch porn, and not, you know, put himself out there or not feel like that testosterone-based male. I think that's key, though, at a societal level, when we look at what's going on, a lot of people think ideologically the society is warped, which it is. But chemically, we're so imbalanced and we're so attacked by all this garbage in the food supply, the GMOs, the BPA, and all of it, that it's really biological. It's really physically we're changing, and that's altering our mental state. So if we break this down enough, I think that really explains why society is where it's at. Tune in to PrisonPlanet.tv for an extended broadcast. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV.
More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show. We have a serious problem right now. We have little girls thinking they're boys and we have little boys thinking they're girls and we have uh, the majority of the population that can't even get pregnant. You know, we have low testosterone levels in, you know, 80% of the rates. males, high depression. You know, Suicide. we have prescription medications like statins, which are causing uh, low testosterone levels. I mean, if you look at the majority of the problems that we're facing right now and the increasing incidence of disease and degenerative disease and cancer, it's all, most of it linked. Well, it's all linked to chemical toxicity, but the majority of it is linked to the fact that the operation of population control factors are put in place and that people don't, you know, you might hear something on the news about how fluoride is better. You might hear something about BPA, but you're not digging deeper and deeper and deeper and saying, wow, is it every single thing I touch? All these cleaning products I have in my, in my house that are, you know, uh, you know, estrogen men that are going to increase my estrogen levels. It's, and everything. it's really about jacking the estrogen levels up and pushing the testosterone levels almost non-existent. And that's what's causing all these hormone disruptions. That's what's causing them in the womb. That's, it's all getting into the water supplies all over the world. That's what's, that, you know, you have the gender bending chemicals that are affecting everybody. I mean, think of how many people drink tap water. And not only that, bottled water and well water where you think you're drinking clean water, they don't filter out the hormones and the, some of these other chemicals. And even if I mean, they're BPA free, they now have BPS, which is arguably twice as bad. And there's nothing that I've seen that's BPS free. So really you can't avoid it. It's on the currency. And when you print something out from a printer, it's on the ink from that. It's in plastic water bottles. It's, it's pretty much in everything. And then also the wrappings of the food, it'll, it'll leach into the food supply. So when you're eating something, you're eating BPA inside of it. So the it's phthalates impossible to and the plastic, it. there's over a hundred different forms of like, that are just endocrine disruptors, just like BPA. That was a whole scam when they, when they outlawed uh, baby bottles with BPA because they knew that if they got baby bottles outlawed as BPA, they could still use it in everything else. And it's still used as a liner inside of all the cans and even or organic juices and everything like and that. And let's not forget the FDA had the opportunity to ban BPA and they chose not to do so. No, because it looked good because the American Chemical Society came in and said we want BPA banned in baby bottles. But if you do the research back, there was very little, if any, BPA ever in baby bottles anyway. So it didn't even really matter. They just used that as a scapegoat to say, look over here and forget about BPA. And everybody just automatically assumes that BPA has been banned, but it's still in any flexible plastic. You can still, you know, any microwave that you cook your food in is going to heat the BPA and like put it directly into the food. And there's other ones too that are out there. So, you know. Meanwhile, they're also loaded with GMOs, which the FDA says is perfectly safe. And it just goes in, it is an operation. It is a eugenics operation, because otherwise they would take it out. The overwhelming majority, 96%, wants to label GMO foods, take it out of the food supply, get rid of EPA, but they're not doing it. It is an operation, an attack on us. Especially since pesticides are high in uh, endocrine disrupting and lower the, the estrogen levels and, in, and lower the, I mean, increase the estrogen levels and lower testosterone. I mean, when you look at Roundup, which is the number one pesticide, glyphosate, you look at, um, which is now in the groundwater. Which is now in the grand, groundwater, atrazine. And we, you know, we haven't even gone into the, the, the factors and the chemicals that they're spraying in the air through chemtrails. Um, you know, we know high levels of aluminum also are uh, depressing testosterone levels. Actually, gluten and grain and wheats and foods suppress testosterone levels and increase estrogen. So, I mean, you, when you see, you can look at everybody these days, I mean, Look at girls uh, having their menstrual cycle at nine years old. Look at you, you could look at girls' hands and feet. I mean, if you look at a girl's hands and feet like 20 years ago, now if you look, if you compare a guy's uh, hands to a girl's hands and feet, they almost look exactly the same. I mean, so we are becoming a nation which is uh, hormone disrupted and you know the relation how that affects the other part of it.